what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clear on the crowd What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani And you're tuned in to another talk of the town interview And who do we have in the building today? Rico Rico P <laughs> I was about to say, don't do that. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Rico. Up, We're up, so up, happy to have you. How you feeling? I'm chilling, man. Cooling. Okay. Happy Thursday. We almost hit a weekend. How was yeah. your week? Sure, right. It was cool. Okay. Okay. So before we get into the interview, I'm going to give you a few questions of this or that, okay? Just to see where your head is at with a couple things. All right? You ready? Uh, yeah. All right. Grills or chains? What? Grills or chains? Grills or chains? Mm-hmm. Can I have both? You got to pick one. This or that? Chain. Okay. Breakfast or dinner? Breakfast. Book smarts or street smarts? Street. Introvert or extrovert? Shit. It gives introvert or extrovert? I know. Intro. Intro? Okay. Drive on a belt or drive on a Jackie? The Jackie be wild, bro. The nah, Jackie is belt. OD. Pack, mad traffic, <laughs> big ass trucks. Nah, I'll take the belt. Too many twists and turns for me. Um, R and B or rap? R and B. That's it. See, you don't know that. Mm-hmm. We we gonna get into it. Influencer or like entrepreneur shorty or nine to five. You said what? Like a shorty that's like an in entrepreneur influencer or like a shorty that's a nine to five type structure job. Damn. I can't pick both. It's this or that, Rico. Nah, Come man. on. That's not how it works. Negotiate. Uh, I tried to negotiate with the introvert, extrovert. I said introverted, right, extrovert, um, but you got to pick one. Whatever makes them happy. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you rock with that one. Yeah. All right. You're not discriminating, so that's cool. All right. Be rich and unknown or broke and famous? You said what? Be rich, rich and unknown or broke and famous? Rich and unknown. Period. Facts. First class or PJ? First class with PJ. I don't even like flying, so I don't even care. I'm scared of planes, so I ain't never on a PJ. I'd be shook. Me too. I don't like small planes, and that's why I put it there because some people might feel like that's the obvious yeah, question. Small but planes and I ain't cool with those. Yeah, so good first, first class. class okay, okay. Smoke or drink? I don't drink, so. Like at all? Nah. I ain't drinking like ten years. Hmm. Okay. I smoke though. Oh, I know. Because one thing about Rico, especially when you in the studio, every picture I see, you got a spliff in hand. Have to. That's a studio essential. That's, That's what it That's is. True. Okay. And now, faith or shoot for the stars, aim for the moon? You said what? Faith uh -huh. or shoot for the stars, aim for the moon? Come on, shoot for the stars, man. Period. What? Okay. That, <laughs> that is our this or what? that. Now, let's, I mean, hey, I'm asking, what's your opinion? All right. So we're going to get right into it. So I know that you were born in Haiti and raised in Brooklyn. Talk to us a little bit about that. When did you come to Brooklyn? Since I was two years old. Oh, okay. So yeah. you've been here basically all year. Forever. Okay. And when you were growing up, like, what kind of music were you listening to at the time? Um, yo, I was, listen yo, I was a big Wu-Tang. Mm. I knew, like, every meth, RZA bars. Like, no lie. You guard. Word or, for word, yeah. bar for bar. Okay. okay. So, at the time when you were listening to Wu-Tang as you were growing up, did you have an idea that of, like, you being in the music nah, industry? Nah, yo. I was playing ball. I, I had, like, regular ball dreams or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of, like, stumbled on the music. It wasn't, it wasn't, like, some shit, like, when I was little, I'm playing keys and, nah. So, what happened? Nah, how I, did, so, I, how did it yo, all work out? Boom. Or for, like, um... Young Buck, Young Buck first album. Okay. It was a song on there called, it was two records. It was one called Bang Bang, mm -hmm. and it was another one called Prices on My Head. And the Bang Bang one, it was a sample, like Bang Bang. I sh and I was like, yo, what the hell is that? That beat is crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the hood, and one of my old mentors, um, rest in peace, Chemical, he was like, oh, my boy Needles did that, or whatever. He said, yo, he produced that. I was like, what the fuck is that? He's like, yo, Needles get like, my bad Needles. He's like, yo, Needles get like 50, 80 bands from 50, 
for records and shit, for make beats. I was like, what the okay, fuck is beats? Needles. And I was like, yo, I'm making beats. They getting that much. So you were trying to get to the bag. Yeah, I was trying to get to the bag, man. I think that's so interesting. And this is something that we're going to get into a little later, but it's so interesting that one of the songs that you named was Bang Bang. And the song that you worked on with Nikki, oh, Nikki she was Jane. like, bang, yeah, yeah, yeah. bang, bang. Okay. So, all right. So that's when you knew that that's what you <laughs> wanted to get into. But at what point did you actually start making moves within the music industry? Yo, right away, like, um, right away, like, I, I connected with a, then I met my boy, who's, like, my best friend right now, Crown Beats. Mm -hmm. He's the one that produced The Prices on My Head. Mm -hmm. So I started hanging with him and a couple of other cats. Then one of my old partners, um, my boy Jason, he had an MP, and he kind of, like, showed me how to use the MP or whatever. I still wasn't nice. I mm -hmm. still, matter of fact, I didn't even know how to make beats. When Mano, shout out to Mano, when Mano first came home, me and my boy gave him a beat or whatever. And uh, I didn't know how to make beats. I just knew that, like, how to, like, the ideas and how to put shit together or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, everybody knew me. Like, that's what from, like, like. Shout, out, shout out to Duke. Duke the God, that's, like, my big bro. He, he kind of, like, gave me my first chance to, like, run around in the buildings and play beats or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm running around with Duke in the office and whatever, and I ain't really know how to make beats yet. But they think I'm, I got the fire beat or that Rico Rico shit fire. But my boy Jason, he was like the brain. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just telling him like, yo, sample this. We're not going to sample old school. We're going to sample movies because the movies be having some fire shit. Mm -hmm. So I remember I even bought uh, this uh, record, um, what movie is it? Van Helsing. And we were just sampling stuff from Van Helsing or whatever. Something got placed on there. I ain't even going to mention it because they ain't even clear that shit. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and that was that. Then, like, I started getting busy on the beats because my boy, he felt kind of like, he kind of felt the way that we, be, we would be, like, in the building and everybody, like, yo. Gravitate to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and he would be mm -hmm. in the back. And he's like, man, I'm the nigga making the beats. Everybody fuck with this thing. Mm -hmm. so Not kind of like, producing. I ain't mad at it. So he kind of, like, started, like, ducking me and doing little weird shit. Then he went and signed a deal without telling me or whatever. And they asked him, they was like, yo, what's up with the boy? Your partner, and he, he said, nah, I'm the one that do all the beats and da, da, da. He, he put just, you out there like that? He's like, that. yo, he just, be, he just be buying the records and putting the money up and, or whatever. And once I heard that, I said, <laughs> I said oh, watch word. this. I said, word. <laughs> what? I bought my Triton. I bought my MP, all that shit in like a month. I used to work at, uh, I, used to, I used to have a nine to five. I used to work at Sheraton and shit. I was taking money from the parking lot, <laughs> stash of bread, <laughs> get extra money, get some more equipment. And after that, I just turned up, and and I don't even think he made beats anymore and shit. I'm saying mm. he been wrapped that up like ten years ago. He's done. He, and look at you. Yeah. So okay, so coming off of that, what was like? What were you doing that gravitated the attention of like Soldier Boy? Because I think that was like your first big place, yo, right? Everything was just it was just like yo. I was making beats for like I was in my crib, my mom's room, like a savage. Hot ass little room cooking like crazy. But I was cooking for the wrong purpose. Mm. You feel me? I was just thinking about that bread. Right. I'm like, nah, this nigga getting 50 bands. Timbo getting like 400. Swiss getting like 600. I was like, nah, I'm just cooking. But it wasn't clicking. So it was like end of the summer towards like September or something like that. And I say, yo, man, if I don't sell a beat, I was like, I don't even care about the bread. I was like, I just want to hit one of these motherfuckers on my beat. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, God, fuck the money. Just make one of these niggas pick my shit. And around, like, it was before Halloween, my boy uh, Rock. And Rock hit me. My boy Rock was like, yo, I got Soldier Boy email. I said, man, I want that shit. I was like, I nigga making bad. Uh -uh. Yo, I was like, he's making bad, like, <laughs> yeah. ringtone music. I said, man, I ain't got no ringtone beats. All my beats is, like, tr like hard trap shit or whatever, whatever. I was like, Soldier Boy ain't going to fuck with my shit. He said, all right. I said, matter of fact, send it. I sent Soldier five beats. He recorded all five of them joints. Mm. Like me and Soldier, we like you could ask him. He probably forgot. We got like we had we did like fifty records because oh, I was yeah. just sending him beats only. Every time I sent him a beat, that nigga wrote some shit to so me. So that means Soldier got some shit it. in the stash. You know what I'm saying? That towards his album um, DeAndre way or whatever. I think I produced like four or five records on there, mm -hmm. and I did the joint with him and Fifty. Mm -hmm. And after that, the album flopped. That shit did like 11K. Like before before the numbers came in, I was like, baby Jesus. Because niggas like, yo, this nigga, all, what, Rico all over Soldier album? That shit going platinum, Soldier this. 
But in the before the album came out, this nigga just started getting mad trouble, cat mm-hmm. stacks. So once yeah, that I was saw like that, 2010. I said, damn, yeah. this nigga not go fucking do no fucking numbers. So when that when that 11k hit, I had before that I had a bunch of uh, publishing companies hit me up. My boy Walter Jones, shout out to Walter. Walter was hit, and then when it, when they flopped, I, I used to have a thing when like shit go bad, I run the dr. My aunt's in the crib and just hide. So I, I flew to DR for like three months. I fucking grew a beard and shit. <laughs> I was looking crazy. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just hiding. I was on Twitter just watching people tweet or whatever. And I hit, I hit Walt. I was still making beats out there. And I hit Walt. I was like, yo, bro, I got this beat. I think Kanye, it was a sample. I was like, yo, I think Kanye will body it or whatever, whatever. He's like, word, that's crazy. My boy, um, my boy Steven Victor, he managed Pusha T. They over there in, um, I forgot where Kanye went. Hawaii, one of them shits. He said, they're over there working right now. I think Kanye was working on Deep Fantasy or some shit. Okay. He said, they're over there right now. Uh, I could send it to them or whatever. I said, yo, hell yeah. So he sent Steven the beat. And Steven, Steven took my email and hit me direct. Seems like, yo, B, uh, uh, I'm what man. You know, I managed to push it. Da, da. Yo, you got more beats? I said, yeah. He said, yo, that the beat you sent fire. Yo, send some more shit. I just sent a bunch of shit. He's like, yo, you fired. Who managed you? I was like, nobody. He said, yo, I'm going to manage you. You heard? I was like, what? I was like, this nigga with Kanye and Push. I was like, all right, boss. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. It's crazy because I know that you said like things lead into each other. But like even in that one story, there were so many names that connected dots for things that you later on did. So that really, that's, that's crazy. Okay. So you went to DR to like get away after the album flopped. (laughs) Yeah. Was that like something that you did? Like, do you feel like in your early stages you got discouraged easily? Um, nah, not really. So it wasn't out of discouragement. Nah, really. it was just like, let me get out of here, man, and regroup. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Let, okay. Let that 11K rumor die down real quick. But you want to know what's crazy that that's such a big part of your story because if you look your name, like, that's one of before the first me, things yo, that come before up. Before me, before I sent Soldier Beats, Soldier wasn't rapping on no gangster shit. Mm-hmm. From my knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't remember Soldier on like trap beats talking about choppers and shit. I'm saying, I used to be a big Soldier Boy fan. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. One of my I, favorite songs is SpongeBob, that whole. He was, he was singing on SpongeBob track. So yeah. I think that, I think that that's fair to say, honestly. Yeah. Um, okay, so then where, so, okay. You also worked as an AR. So where did that that's come into like, the. That's way after. Okay, yeah. so we have to fill in the gap between yeah, after, like, you working Soulja, with Soulja. After that Soulja, I started working with Pusha because of Steven. So me and Pusha started rocking. And um, then I have, boom, so boom, right? Steven got the gift of gab. Mm-hmm. So he started like some, I don't know what he did, man. But while I'm in DR, Everybody started hitting me. After I spoke to Steve, mm-hmm. everybody started hitting me. All the like publishers that wasn't trying to fuck with me no more, mm-hmm. everybody was hitting me. Then, everybody, then it was like, oh, um, Pusha got this, um, Pusha and Kanye got this kid over there cooking all the beats, some kid named Rico. I was even there. I mm-hmm. think it's Steve had started some shit. <laughs> so like all the publishing companies started there. Walter was like, I beat. If you're going to fuck with Steve, come fuck with Sony or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's my so I, I signed with um, Walt over there. Then after that, they flew me to Miami. I was there for like three months working on, um, damn, what was that Push album? Uh, mm. The one with, uh, damn, I think it's I My Name Is My name. name. Yeah, My Name Is My yeah, Name. Like so I was working over there for like three months. Me and The Dream, like the album that came out, mm-hmm. that's not what we did. Like me, hmm. and, me and The Dream produced the whole album before Kanye heard it. So, so after Kanye heard it, <laughs> he just took that whole shit apart. Ch- chopped okay. everything off. I had like 10 records. Me and Dream did like 10, 15 records on there. I ended up with one. Mm, <laughs> 40 damn. acres, yeah. I did mad records on that. So let me ask you something because I know I jumped the timeline a little bit with the A&R thing, but something I really wanted to touch on was the timeline between you working with Soldier in 2010, putting out the song with Nicki and Lil Wayne, that came out on the album in April of 2012, and then Exodus that came out in May of 2012. Ex- which one came before? Um, Pink Friday came out first. Oh, word? Exodus came out, then Wayne's uh, <laughs> Wayne's response came out after that. 
So I wanted to touch, talk, talk, bleh, take three, touch base on you about that because I know while you were working with Soldier Boy, that's when you got the first inquiry about working with Nikki, right? That's what I what I heard. Soldier, nah, I was I was good friends with uh, Safari. With Safari, that was my boy. Okay, because like college and shit. All right, so. Somebody gotta get their fast straight. Cause what I yeah. what I what I read was that while you were working with Soldier, that was why when you got your first inquiry about nah, working man. with Nikki, and nah. you say, hold on, cause let me tell you what they saying out there. Yeah. That you said that you couldn't work with Nikki because you had your hands tied with Soldier. And I was like, I needed to ask you about that. I must because have been a freaking like PCP or some shit to say some retarded. Yeah, no, I literally wanted to make sure that nah. I talked to you about that because I'm like, it's no way that you turn Nikki down nah, man. for Soldier. Nah, Safari hit me. He was like, "Yo, bro, um, send some beats. I'm gonna get you on the on the next project." Mm-hmm. And they was in New York. Yo, I, I cooked up like, yo, Nikki. Yo, yeah, she's dangerous. I, That's sis though, but she don't play. I cooked up like a hundred beats. Yeah, and she only shows one. She ain't like, yo, she ain't like. <laughs> So far as people like, nah, not that one. She's like, what the hell is that? What sound is that? Da-da. <laughs> so Safari so called me. He's like, yo, bro, nah. I'm like, yo, bro, I sent like 30 beats, bro. I was like, what she want, She bro? want what she want. So like the bang, bang, I swear to God, that was like some, like a, yo, what the fuck she want, yo? <laughs> like I just did some bullshit. Like something that I know, like her type of flow. Like mm-hmm. I said, like, she want this shit. She want this type of bullshit. Mm-hmm. That's when they used to add the little, I was like, yo, here. And she, she was like, she oh, shit, hard. And I was like, what? Yeah, I mean, that was like. The, <laughs> I even like that beat. I was like, what the fuck? And it's crazy because that was like one of the biggest songs on the album too. With Lil yeah, Wayne. Wayne was on yeah, yeah, like with Lil Wayne. So how did it feel? <laughs> Pink Friday dropped. Roman Reloaded dropped. A month after. Exodus. Exodus dropped. Coming at Young Money. Coming at Wayne. Shit crazy. How did that feel to you? Did you feel like... Because an important part of that, too, is Wayne's response was, fuck Fuck Pusha T and everybody that fuck with him. So what was your reaction after finding out about all of that? No lie. Pusha, my bro. That's like my day one. You know what I'm saying? We've been cool for like probably like 20 years. Mm -hmm. I ain't care. The first thing that came to my mind was like, damn, son. I ain't gonna get no record with Jake. <laughs> I ain't gonna get no record with no more record with Wade. I said, yo, it's over. Yeah, the time. I, I already knew it. I said, yes, a rap. I'm never gonna get nothing over there. That's what I was really tight about. I was like, fuck it with these niggas. But these my men. So I was like, oh boy. So did you feel like it hurt <laughs> any of your like business? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Did you see it outwardly or was it something that you kind of just like felt? Because some people like outwardly talk about. I knew it, man. Because like even some of the producers that mm-hmm. work with Drake and shit. I, I, I felt the vibes like they knew like I, I'd be with pushing niggas don't be fucking with me like that mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying Cause some of them like you know what I mean fuck with me shout out to vinyls that's my boy vinyls is cool but some other ones that's really deep in it like mm-hmm. I don't really care I don't really think it's 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 like their personal shit if nobody if no shots fired nobody getting hurt nobody rumbling I don't really I understand it's that. It's not real beef. It's like, I think it's like some music shit or whatever it is. I don't really think it's like, well, I don't be a big pusher. I don't, I don't be around pushing for him be like, ah, drink, ah. So <laughs> that's why I don't even take that shit serious. It'd be like, it's like, you know, rap, little rap personal stuff between them. I feel like I could understand. Not I can understand, but I think what's funny is the sample went crazy. The ha 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 ha. Yo, that was, that was, that was like dream. Yo, we was, that we was really at, went we was crazy. That and Dream, like Dream, this is what he'll do. He'll like play football. He like playing NFL. So he'll go in the booth, do his thing, and go downstairs, play video games for like two hours. Mm-hmm. He'll hum something in the booth for like an hour. He'll hum a whole record, no words. Then go down, play his little video games. Ah, uh, then go back and just fill in the whole record. A true musician. Mm-hmm. So while he was doing that, he's like, man, he said, what you doing, nigga? You, you trying, nigga, you ain't working, nigga, with a beat tag? What a beat tag? What that for? I said, yo, I'm about to cook some shit. He said, man, you ain't got no fucking care. You ain't cooking shit. You ain't got no heat. You ain't going to do nothing. Da, da, da. Like, he kept, like, taunting me. Mm-hmm. Like, you ain't going to bring no heat. I said, all right, why? I said, I'm about to bring some shit tonight or whatever. He said, man, whatever, whatever. So I went down. I forgot what studio was Miami Beach doing one of them shits. And I was just going through stuff. And uh, I was listening to that Biggie record. And I just heard the ha, 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 ha. And I told the engineer, I said, yo, bro, chop that right there. 
I said, that's the beat. I said, chop that. He chopped it. <clears throat> he sent it to me. But the beat, the Exodus beat is not the beat. It's not the original beat I did. Mm -hmm. Like, Dream. It was That beat was so freaking dark and demonic. It was so up. It was mad. Other sounds in there. Yeah, Dream there was, was like, a lot nah, Dream said it's too much going on. He just, like, took out this. He just took out math. He just, I think he kept, like, one, two sounds. Yeah, I mean, it definitely didn't help the situation that the song that you sampled was what's beef. Yeah. Um. So it it all seemed very intentional. Yeah. I got, then yeah, I was like, it was like I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, man. Like even with the Nikki record, it was, it was around the time when um they were saying, Yo, Nikki's pop. She she she's going super pop. She's not rapping. And she and addressed that in this one. I remember too. Flex was saying it, and like a week later she dropped Bang. So I had so it's just like if you got like. Beef, you want some beef shit? She Get said, Nikki Rico, Pop, only thing that's pop is my endorsement. I, she made it known. She made it known. And you had a hand in that too. Okay, so, all right. So after you worked with Nikki, um, you still continued on working nah, with Push. Yeah, Wait, I'm what? Ghost. Yeah, I'm like, wait, after you, exercise, were still, I'm ghost. you were still doing a lot and you were you were hands on. And if you don't don't make that face, you have you have a lot of records that you're attached to. Yeah, I used to work with Ryan Leslie too. That's my boy. You want to know what surprised me? That you had a part in um, Tamar Braxton's album. Had a hit with her. Wait, my boy I, uh, TC. What up? Tamar down and Love and War was one of my favorite albums. So like, I was like, wow, the versatility really like spoke for itself. Yeah, because like, when... I tell people, R and B is like my first shit. I like R and B. Mm -hmm. I just got caught up in a rap. Mm -hmm. Like I work with Dream. Me and Dream got we did some shit. You so you but and the Dream, I was a big Dream fan too. It's a goat. Listen, Fast Car was on repeat so goat. much. Not even like the mainstream songs. I was goat. very much a goat. yeah. So um, you said that you got caught in, caught up in the rap. Why was that? Because the the request, the demand was high, yeah, it was or like the people I was around. Like I wanted to be on some R and B type vibes, mm -hmm. but my surroundings is just like you know. Mm -hmm. So I just got. Stuck in the rap shit. So, what point did you stop sending out like beat packs, and then people start coming to you for for beats? Yo, you want to know the real truth? I sure about do. Beat packs. Ask, ask anybody. You could ask my man Wayno. Shout out to Wayno, man. I'll make I'll make six beats for the year. Six for the year? Yeah. I don't make beats. I don't be in the. I don't just be like. That was the early. My early stages. No, I know, but I'm saying I don't, I don't like beat. Like somebody asked for a beat pack today, and I say, "Yo, bro, I don't even do that." Like I'll pull up on you in right. the studio. We could cook it up. But, but like, but it was. It hasn't always been like that. So that's why I'm saying. At what point? I, were even you when able it was like that, I would have like six, ten beats, and I would send it to like fifty freaking artists and just see the who same picks it up. Shit. Yeah. Do you think I make beats off a of mood? Okay. I got to be in the mood to like. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not just gonna. Oh, today is Monday. I got to make 10 beats for the day. Nah. Now, is that something that you also practice when it comes to the producers that you manage? Because I know that you have a hand in two other producers, you know, which we'll get to. But do you, like, recommend for them to send out beat packs? Or do you yeah, let them, like, they do, yeah? Yeah, they do what they want. So do you think that it's helpful for producers it is. to send out Yo, beat packs? Yo, don't watch me. <laughs> Y'all better send them beat packs <laughs> out. You feel me? Okay. I, I'm just like I'm just in my own world. So it's very much I do you know what, what I'm I say. But if I like I art, like when I like an artist, mm -hmm. like somebody that's fire, I'll cook up. Okay. I'll send that. Like you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, yo, yo, I need to get in with bro. Like let, let's let's say a future or some shit or whatever. What? I'll cook that shit up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm not just gonna be in the crib just cooking beats and just like waiting for month, somebody to ask you for a beat pack. So okay. Like, so before your name started like blowing up, did you have a list of people that you wanted to work with like throughout the stint of your career? Or was it just like you were willing to work with whoever you really fucked with as time progressed? Um, I was trying I ain't gonna lie. I was trying to like work with Yay. I was trying to get in that Yay, Yay circle hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Fuck with push it. That's a circle, like it's hard to catch Yay. And I kinda learned like boom. I took a little bit from everybody, like, you know what I'm saying? That's why I be, I be ghosts and motherfuckers be like, yo, you be ghosts. You don't come outside, you don't do this, you don't do that. It's because, like, the people that I grew up idolizing or whatever and around, like, Dream. You don't see Dream outside and none of that shit. Right, he's very low-key. You know what I'm saying? Kanye be popping out, but he, it's not like before that, like, nobody could meet Ye. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't just walk in and say, oh, Kanye. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I kind of, like, 
ran with that, like, man, I, I'm going to be low-key. It looked like that low-key shit lit. Like, when you pop out, it's like it's in a ghost. It gives a lot. It leaves yeah, a lot to be desired. Outside, it's like, like what, what you got going on? I don't want to be everywhere. It's just like when Dre told me one time, don't be don't be one of the producers that's, that's on every album, trying to be on this album. He said, yo, be on the ones that's going to change your life. That counts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those, the shits that's going to change your life, those are the ones you chase. So basically, like, he'll, basically he'll tell you, like, nigga, you better chase them Beyonce records. Like, you I know, know that's right. On everything. That's cool if you want to do that. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. kids that do that. Do your thing. But... Yeah, you want to okay. do. You want to get the placements that's gonna get you out the hood, get your family good. Not mm -hmm. just these kids that got like fifty placements and they're still in the hood. That's it. Yeah, that's true. So I mean, it seemed like a lot of people gave you like some good words of advice and had their hands in your career as you were growing up. Is there anything that you were told or that you learned throughout the way that still stands by you and like kind of helps you navigate the way that you handle business now? I'm kind of hard headed. There's a lot of stuff people tell me I wish I followed. I felt that. I'll be mm -hmm. wilding. Like, mm -hmm. Not I'll be wilding. Yeah, I'll be wilding. There's like a lot of good advice people gave me. I just. Okay, so since there's a lot, what's like the top three things that you wish that you would have practiced or taken into more account that oh, you didn't? You should pay taxes. <laughs> oh, they got you. They got you real bad. Yo, By that laugh. Pay our taxes, man. He don't play. Yeah, and I was getting no, and this don't. stuff. Steve makes you tell me, like, yo, man, you out here spending all that bread, man. You wilding, man. Da, 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 you better pay your taxes, man. Don't be moving like, don't be blowing all this bread and you da 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 da. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uncle Sam, Ten like you said, later. he do not play. Now, 10 years later, it's crazy because you probably wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> but what did you think? So nobody, like, well, I guess he put you on. He told you. But what you thought? You was the golden one. Yeah, they okay. wasn't going to come for you. Nah. Hey, it took him like, it was like 10 years to find a brother. <laughs> I was chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that for you because that's OD. 10 years of built up taxes goes crazy. Like, All right. So let's continue the timeline. So what came next after you said you took a little break? Mm -hmm. Industry's so fake I had to. Oh, yeah. That's a very loaded statement. Nah, I mean, we know. Fact. I mean, it is a fact. A we, fact. we know this. That was the first time I learned, like, if you're not. Yo, everybody your friend, everybody next to you when you got when you got motion, when you like a part of some shit that's like moving and whatever. So everybody gonna tap in. Yo, what up, little bro, big bro? But once that little motion slows down and mm -hmm. all the like, I used to get like there's rappers that's like big rappers right now. Like these niggas used to call my phone. Like, what up, bro? Yo, Rick, pull up here, pull up there. And then it was yeah. Once your motion stopped, then once I peeped that. I'm like, oh, these niggas ain't my, these niggas ain't your friends. These is fucking. Mm, what Drake so said, like, no I, friends so in I'm the like, industry. I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me go ghost. Let me stay away from these niggas. So, okay, so you noticed the change mm -hmm. once things started slowing down mm -hmm. from the people that you thought yeah, was then like. Yeah, moved to LA you. after that. That's why I went super ghost. Okay, you moved to LA. Were you making any moves out there? No. You said you were ghost, but I didn't know if you were still cooking up. I was cooking your, up, mm -hmm. but it was I wasn't cooking up for no purpose it was just because i wanted to like make beats i wasn't trying to like send beats to nobody okay none of that then around that time steven hit me he, he sent me a song first he hit, asked me for some beats and i sent him like a couple beats then like a couple days later he sent me a song this shit funny he sent me a song oh i thought you was about to start now nah, he sent me a song <laughs> and i was like oh shit i said like, yo future on my joint i said that's future and he not replying and i said yo son i'm playing it i'm like yo shit that's future i said is that future and shit, I'm like, yo, bro, that's future, that's future, my shit. He said, nah, B, this kid designed. I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> this, this real, designer, my man, that's my boy, honey, that's my boy. It's just facts, you feel me? That's the first time I heard it, so I'm like, I thought I had a record with future. Okay, bro. so what was your reaction when he told yeah, you it was designer? Yeah, when I read it, I looked at my phone and said, designer, I said, who the fuck is that, bro? He said, yo, this kid, trust me, B, this kid, da da da. And I listened to the song again, I'm like, all right. I don't know what I don't really know what bro saying, but the nigga sound like Future vibes. I'm like yo, and I told him I said yo bro, that shit might bust because he sound like Future B. Like you might do your thing. So was this before or after Panda was like? That was, that was before he ain't dropped Panda. So obviously that's why you no didn't. he dropped no he ain't dropped Panda yet. And that's why you didn't know who yeah, he was yet. Know. But you already nah. knew that he sounded like Future before <laughs> I said, yo, it became I a thing. I had a record with Future. 
You feel me? So when I told That's Steve, I said, yeah, he, he, he going to do his thing. Yeah, do your thing. I was like, yeah. And I think Steve signed him the yeah and, and bro went diamond. So, hey, mm -hmm. I suck. So is that what got you back outside or were you still nah, after that? I, I was so, still ghost. So what got you like back on it? My boy Wolf. Shout out to Wolf. My boy Wolf. Wolf hit me like, yo, bro, check out. Um, he was like, yo, check out uh, these kids, my, my, my little homies from the 90s, mm -hmm. Bobby and Rowdy. And he said, yo, check this video out. And I seen it. I was like, oh, shit, hot. Then I sent it to Pusha. And I was like, yo, look at these kids, whatever. And your Pusha was like, yo, what is this? this is different. He said, yo, listen, B, I don't know what you doing in Cali. This is what Pusha told me. I don't know if you remember. He's like, I don't know what you doing in L.A., but you need to get your ass back to Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. And get on your Manny Fresh shit and, like, produce these little kids right here and da-da-da-da. And I was like, word. Because I wasn't doing nothing in L.A. But smoking weed, lean, and just mm. nothing. So I, so I went to the town. And uh, I didn't even know nobody from the 90s. You feel me? And I walked, and my boy, my boy Cuzzo was with me. And he's like, yo, they be over here. In the backyard. So I just walked in the backyard. I ain't know nobody. And I, I in the nineties. Yeah. And, 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 and yo, shout out to Smith Money, my man Smith. I saw Smith and, and I was like, yo, I see your Bobby Roddy here. <laughs> and Smith's like, yo, who are you? He right. Like you just I saw my name Rico somebody, and I was like, like, yo, I'm from the floors. My name Rico and shit. He said, Yo, oh no, nah, I think I know you cuz. I heard of you cuz and shit. He said, Yo, Bobby not, you said Roddy and I'm not here, da 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 da. And shit. But um, what's up? And I was like, yo, um, they fire. I want to bring them to um, Steve and see what's up, my mm -hmm. boy Steven. And he's like, yo, nah, Roddy not here right now, da, da, da. Then I, um, I was like, I bet. Then I called, I hit up Shaw Money. Shout out to Shaw Money, too. And I hit up Shaw. I was like, yo, bro, look at this video. And Shaw was in, I ain't going to front. Shaw didn't move. He's like, all right, da, da, da. Because the video was in at a million views yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going crazy. I'm like, yo, Shaw, look at this shit, bro. Shot ain't say nothing. Then a week go by, I think it, it started going crazy. Mm. Then Shot hit me like, yo, what up with them kids? Yo, what up? I don't see. I said, yo, don't uh, sleep. I, said, I forgot what. I was like, I don't know, man. And I hit Steve. I said, yo, Shot hit me or something like that. And um, I think we linked up in the city with all of them. And it was like performing in the studio, playing their records. And Steve was like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, Bobby and them. That's when Bobby was wild. Bobby mm -hmm. was Bobby. You feel me? And Roddy was, you know what I mean? And Steve was like, like, oh shit, like this shit is crazy. Steve was like, I don't understand what this is, but it's fire. Yeah, it sure was. You know I mean? It was like, a time. Yeah. I still say Yo, honestly, now. Steve was trying to get them to sign a Yay. That was like, mm. that was that was our main because you know Yay was like the the biggest name we knew. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I'm saying. Well, Steve, that's Steve, man. So we everything we had, we be like, Yo, play that shit for Yay or whatever. Mm -hmm. and Steve was like, Yo, I'm about to play this shit for Yay, man. See, what, but I don't know, I don't know what happened after that. I mean, yeah, that was really a time. I still say now that I feel like when it comes to like New York anthems, computers is definitely one of them. That was just the bros, a complete the bros, different time. The bros, a stamp like Bobby Roddy, they they gotta have their own own little statue for for that time. You feel me? Because when they they turned it up. They, they sure did. They changed the shit. They like, put Brooklyn, definitely put, put Brooklyn back on the map. crazy? Bobby, mm -hmm. Rowdy, what? So, they got you back outside. Fake back outside, facts. Okay, so I have to ask you. Then I went ghost again. After you the, just love going ghost, nah, Rico. Nah, shit keep happening, B. Then, then, then my bros got locked. I said, damn, man. Like, what the fuck? You feel me? So, once they got locked, I said, yo, I'm out of here. Back to Cali. So, I went back to Cali. <laughs> Going back. Okay, so let me ask you while we on the topic of Bobby and Roddy real quick, how do you feel about Bobby's music post release? Um I don't know, bro. Like I think people should do whatever music what makes them happy. What makes them happy? Like ten years ago he was doing that music. Mm hmm It's ten years ago. So he probably outgrew that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's probably not his vibe. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby's an entertainer. Mm -hmm. me, that's bro. I be, I, I wish bro could be in some mood. Like Bobby could be a good actor. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of personality. Yeah, bro could Very be vibrant. In some fucking movies or some yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Bobby's like a star. So like, it's a difference with rappers and stars and shit. You know what I'm saying? There's art. There's rappers and there's stars. Like pop, pop to me was not a rapper. No, he was, oh, a he was star. definitely a star. I think a that's superstar. undebatable. So like, yeah. So when people be like, yo. Yo, this nigga nice. My boy nice. This person nice. And they be thinking like, oh, no, nah, I don't want to sign nobody or this. I'm that. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all can't expect. I just had pop smoke. So y'all expect right. me to just go manage like a regular, I'm not trying to disrespect, but if I don't feel it, that's the thing with me. If I don't feel it, I can't envision it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not right. It's not right. So two things that I want to follow up from that. The first is, what do you think, like, what are the things that you look for when you identify a star? Like, what are the qualities of a star to you? Yo, I learned that with pop. Like, I didn't know. I learned a lot of stuff dealing with pop. Like, I used to think, yeah, you got bars, you lit. You, you should get signed because you rapping. Because mm -hmm. you got nice. You, you got punchlines. I, I used to think that was the shit. You feel me? Then when I met bro, bro said... Same thing probably every other song, but it's how he said it and how he made people feel. He had little kids, third graders chasing him. He had second graders with their braids like him, mm -hmm. chasing him in the street. Grown men with their braids Grown like him too. Grown men doing that. Honestly. You feel me? He had gangsters dancing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He had people changing their voice to regular to deep. That's mm -hmm. a fucking start. You got to sign a motherfucker like that. God so, bless my brother. So, yes, R.P. Pop. How, what are some New York artists now? And I could list off a few. Maybe we Good. could do it that way. But what are some New York artists now that you feel like have that star quality? Like, who would you call a star that's coming out of New York right now? Right, right now? Mm hmm You know who I think got this? It's a few of them. Yo, honestly, all these kids, they could be stars in their own type of world they just not these kids a lot of these kids man they just miss like they don't got the right guidance, guidance. you know what i mean like they get their deals and shit it's cool but it's a lot of them i don't see they got that right person in the studios telling them like yo nah don't do that like yo switch up the beat get mm -hmm. on a different vibe now nah, don't 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 say don't rap about smoking on nobody today let's let's rap about money and chicks mm -hmm. and all this shit, they don't got that. So they just be in the studio, put the beat on, and just... <laughs> nah, put the beat on. Yeah, you feel me? Um, but I think Dougie, Dougie, I think Dougie's a star, bro. He just, bro just be, he's dealing with a lot of life situations, but mm -hmm. I think if he could clear his shit up, bro could, like, Dougie could really... I have, agree. He could, shake, he could shake New York up, man. I agree. It's, it's the energy he got, his personality... A lot of these kids don't got that. It's very infectious. And you can tell that he loves what he does. Yeah, I a lot mean, of kids is boring. A lot yeah. of kids don't got that. And they do it for the wrong reasons. Kind of to like what you were saying when you said that when you first started producing, you were doing it for the bag and not yeah. because you were doing it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of artists now, they see what a lot of other artists are getting or what they think that a lot of artists yeah. are getting and they're doing it because they want to get the money, they want to get the clout, the attention, but not because they actually want to do it. I feel like somebody like Dougie, you could tell that he really, really nah, loves Dougie this like shit. What you do, Dougie. Yeah. Okay, so who else? Um, you want me to like shoot off some people? Yeah. All right. Um, but we were talking about her earlier, Ice Spice. You said she what? She got it right now. She got it right now. So she's, she's a star. star. She's not. I don't. I don't know what I saying. You don't know what she's saying. Nah. I'm saying like I don't pay attention. Like she, she got it. She, you know what I'm saying? Her uh, voice, her little, uh, uh, whatever, her, her little melodies. Okay, because I was about, about, about the say. melodies and how you sound. Yo, like, you know what else I look at? How, how a person sound on a beat. Mm -hmm. Like, how your voice Oh, she sound. can ride a beat. Exactly. One thing so about Isis, she can she ride, ride a her beat. sound, how she sound on all these beats. Mm -hmm. She's doing her thing. That's her lane. She not, I don't even consider her a drill artist. Yeah, I think she's very, well, I would. You don't consider her a drill artist? I, I feel like she gives bad bitch drill. No? You know what drill is? So what? Yeah, I was about to ask you. So what, what is, is a drill, drill to artist to you? What's drill? To me, I feel like it's hardcore beats. For me, I'm very much a drill is the beat and not mm. the lyrics. Where drill come from? Chicago. I know they're very much hardcore. We yeah. smoking on this. We shooting this up. Yeah, very much. Drill. We're outside going on a drill. Yeah. I know that that's where it came from. So you got to say like UK drill. Mm -hmm. UK drill and drill is two different things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? New York is doing UK drill. They're not doing drill. Okay. Chief Keith is drill. Dirt, Herbo, that's drill. So, are you saying, okay, so before I ask this follow up question, so to you, what is the difference between Chicago drill and UK drill since they're two different things? Oh, it's just the beat. Just the beat? Yeah. It's okay. The hi hat, hi -hat change in, the, in like the, the, the timing of the kick and the snares. That's it. But 
Okay. They, they rapping about the same, same shit. So you think that a drill song is based but, on the content of yeah, the song? Yeah. The lyrics. Yeah. And a beat, yeah. Okay. So Ice Spice is not a drill artist to you because she doesn't rap about her, the, the, even that her beats is not hard and she be she be rapping on some some cool shit. Like you don't shit. think so? I feel yeah. like it's adapted to like her it's sound, like her but shit I feel is like, like this is just making you buy. It's not like drill. But I feel like a lot of the drill like is the doom doom like that that deep bass, and I feel like she has that because I I don't know I feel like there are artists right What's now. That song? <laughs> What's that song that's out? Not too much on my girl Ice with you that girl, With that girl uh, Who? When uh, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> That ain't fucking drill Well I mean but that's <laughs> not But that's not a drill song Because The Boys Alive was already a song I, I, check She song. just put Ice on you it can't, You can't And she did her thing She did You can't really do that With a lot of other drill rappers I've been in the studio with kids You put another beat If it's not they, they don't know what to do. They don't even, they can't even put, they can't even write their name. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you something. So, but why can't she be a star and a draw artist? I never said she was in a star. No, 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 no. You star. said she was a star, but I'm saying why can't she be a star and a draw artist? Why you want to attack drill art? You don't gotta, I'm not attacking you anybody. You don't got to attach the drill to her. She's a star. That's it. Boom. Okay. Because I think that. Like pop. I, I was not going to say pop is a star drill. Pop is a star. That's it. Boom. But would you consider Pop to be a draw artist? Is what? Would you consider Pop to be a draw artist? No, Pop had different records. Okay. He is very versatile. I mean, all right. We, 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 we going to get that. My boy <laughs> We wasn't just doing... Because a, a lot of people with Pop's name, especially when it comes to the New York drill movement, he... This is a whole different drill. That drill now is not what we were doing. So what, if you had to call it something, what would you call it? The shit right now? No, what you were doing with Pop. I think it was like... Pop was making people feel good. Pop, like a melodic? Yeah, he was, it was like a melodic, gangster, feel good shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like demonic and it ain't make you want to fucking go spin the block and smoking on nothing. You want to, hmm. you, you doing this, you dancing, you, I don't know. It's, See, it's, that's so interesting. It, felt, it, it feels different. That's why I don't really, I do it, it's right now, whatever, but. Els will tell you, I don't really like drill shit right here. Oh, I know. I, I saw like in one of your comments that you were like, uh, somebody needs to tell these kids that drill is, like you said, drill is not it, or something you said like that. I think it reached, and let me clear it, not, not putting none of the kids down. This is what they do mm -hmm. to like get their bread and get out the hood. I'm all for it. I ain't knocking none of that. I'm happy for all them kids. I'm friends with most of them little kids. But... I think it reached like it's plateau. Yeah, you think that it's yeah. How many kids got platinum plaques? Three. Huh? Who? Oh, she had the number on. K fly, free K fly. K fly and we love. And you said I spice no. She just went. Yeah, she just went. Yeah, she just went. Gold. So is that you think that's? Yeah, I was gonna say I spice just went gold. We got two gold. And how many artists we got in New York? Like five, five million. So out of five million drill artists in New York, cause they sign, they sign, they sign a kid every Tuesday. Every Tuesday I stroll on the gram, I see a kid. They be like eight, nine, seven, six. Every but Tuesday does, a drill artist getting signed. Yeah, but, but does that mean that it's really over, or do you think that it's just what's lit? The what sound drill that needs songs you hear on the radio right now? We we're not talking about spice and that. Okay, cause I was what drill record? What man. shit that you hear they playing nonstop? It depends. Yeah, I was gonna say it depends on what radio fly? station you listening to. To be honest, you're not hearing nobody. And, Shout out and, to Drewski for and spinning the, the records fire, of the New York Sound. And some of the kids got stuff that you could play on the radio mm -hmm. that I hear. Like Sha got a couple of joints. Um, a couple of dudes, man. But then the radio's not playing. It. But you know what I think is interesting though for you is you're somebody like a big part of your story. The first thing we talked about. One of the first things we talked about was you being a part of Soldier Boy's album that flopped. And you didn't take that and say, I'm not going to produce anymore. <laughs> or like, I, you went MIA for a little bit, but you didn't stop what you were doing. You evolved your sound. You kept working on your craft until it went somewhere that you felt was marketable and people gravitated towards. Yo, so why can't it be I the skipped, same I thing? Skipped, I like, I'm, I'm the type, do I like to pay homage to like people that helped me? Shout out to uh, Chasing Cash and mm -hmm. Hit Boy. Like when I was, okay, shout out to Hit Boy. Yeah. It was a period of my, of my career. I was in Atlanta. Yo, I used to drive to Atlanta. 
And I used to, and I used to uh, do stakeouts by studios. Me and my boy Marv, I used to be in the car with a beat CD and shit. And I used to just like, anybody I see, I used to just It's like, a dedication for me. Yeah, I used to just run up in, and that's how I met Chase. He was coming down a hill, going to Zach Studios, and I just ran up on him. I'm like, yo, you Chase? It's because I used to see him on Twitter. <laughs> and he'll tell you, he was like, yeah. And he was like, yo, I see you on Rico, I got beats. He said, yo, bro, I, don't, I ain't no manager. <laughs> I'm Rico, I got beat. He said, I ain't no manager, but yo, I'll put the word out and shit. Like, uh, I said, yo, bro, I follow you on Twitter and shit, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. He said, all right, yo, I fuck with you. He's like, yo, fuck with me. Then I, I started hanging with Chase in, in Atlanta for a little bit. Then he they was about to go back to L.A. And he said, yo, we about to move back to Cali, me and Hit Boy and shit. He said, anytime you're in Cali, hit me up. Come fuck with us. Mm -hmm. Then I took a trip out there. One time I hit him. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm in Cali. He said, what? Diddy got a party. We want some Diddy shit tonight. I said, oh, nah. That's why I moved to L.A. Because of that. Ah, night. shit. I heard yeah. about them Diddy then, parties. Yeah, then know? I went to that. And, and, and Chase introduced <laughs> me to, like, a bunch of uh, people from Interscope that was there. Mm -hmm. And shit like that. So, so okay. And love that. But also want to circle back real quick. Because, like I was saying, you did not give up on your sound and what you were doing. Even though the first thing that you had, like, you were heavily involved in Flop. flopped. So, despite the fact that nobody in New York has become platinum yet, why do you think that that should be a measure of where drill, like, has come or where it should end based on metrics? You Yo, don't think? All right. In reality, right, we do, we do, you, you do your work because you love it. Mm hmm But you also want to get paid. Of course. All right. So, like, I just see, like, all right, if nobody going platinum, nobody got, nobody on the radio... Nobody's like really in the charts. Where the bread at? But we just talked about not doing stuff for bread. Of course, getting bread but is where good. The bread at? It, I mean, of course. It's, it's kids. These are kids. Yeah. Where they bread at? Why my, why my boys ain't, you know what I'm saying? So, like. So it's just not as That's why I'm like, okay, like. You feel me? And I, and I tell a lot of, a couple of them, if y'all do other beats, you, 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 you might get attention of a, a, a little dirt or, or somebody else. Little baby or one of these guys, cause they'll be quicker to jump on that than the drill beat. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's mm -hmm. not their shit. You know what I'm saying? That's not their like flow to like if they hear a hot ass song of some nigga in New York that's popping and the beat is like a regular trap beat, blah, 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 they gonna jump on that shit. So do you think that if the it's way a drill beat they gonna be like uh, they probably try to catch it and it's not gonna be that. So do you think that? The wave when like Nicki and the City Girls, like when like the mainstream artists were hopping on the drill beats. Do you think that that's what do you, was that around the time that you felt like it was starting to? Not around that time, like you talking about when um, Cardi and and Doug and them. Well, Cardi, and then yeah. it was also Nicki, and around then the City time, Girls also. It was came. it was it, it had life. It, it was a little life there. Okay. But then nothing happened after that. You mm. know what I'm saying? So, okay. Like, so you think that the way it's trending and, now? And guess what? It got to that because of what you just said. It Nikki Cardi. If they didn't jump on that, would it be that? I mean, I think so. Cause that was already. I feel like they got so on if it Cardi because didn't of where jump on that record. It would be. It would have made that. I don't think it would have gotten that big, but it was it's still already a high, like it's fire. It's yeah, still it was fire, already. A, I'm just trying to tell you when you take the outside mm -hmm. big artists. Mm -hmm. That's not drill, or whatever you want to call it. They make shit go. And I hear you. And I'm sorry so that we keep going to, back and forth. Why not right? try to make more songs so these type of artists right. can jump on your shit and y'all can have more platinum plaques. And You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I hear you. And I'm going to let it go. But I would just argue that the reason why they hopped on those tracks was because of what people were doing in New York to get their attention. Yeah, like, so it had to have been working yo, to some extent. Sometimes people jump on shit, man. Sometimes these artists get on a record just because just they want to be down. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's a trend. Mm -hmm. A word drill is popping. Oh shit! Let me. Who the hottest drill artist? A word. Let me jump on that. It's not like they. It's not like they give a fuck about it or they like the shit. They just want to be part of the. It's like a part they of want, the They want to be part of the mix. Yeah. It's a whole mix. This music game is a mix. So if the mix is drill and everybody talking about drill in New York, they gonna want to be in that mix. So it's not mix. like they love the shit. It's not like they think it's fire. Cause when they drop their album, how many drill beats on there? Exactly. Points were made. So you're saying that the drill wave is just. Slowly. It's slowly un until Coming somebody to the like. I don't know, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, holiday. Hold on, holiday. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Since you just said, all right, yes, you pushed your album back. 
I was reading press releases and stuff saying November, November, you put the song out with Shawnee, you put the song out with 401, who are clearly drill artists. Yeah, 401 get busy. Shout out to them boys. Shout out to 401. Shout out to Shawnee too. Facts. Now, I wanted to talk to you about this because why was it, why, what was it about Shawnee's record that made you put that, make that your debut song from your project? She bodied it. And, the, I, and I love that beat. So it was hard. So did you already? Do you have all of the songs in the tuck, and you were just selecting which ones you wanted to release? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know Shawnee. We know Four One. Can you give us any other hints about who is on the album? Um, I got Shy K, um, Busy Banks, Dread Wu, B Love. Because I saw B -Love, you had put out those little samples My yesterday. Boy, I think. Boo was Savage, A Boogie. Okay. Huh? Shiggy Black, um, DCG Boys, um, Skilly, Skilly Baby. Oh, Skilly Baby. Yeah. We um, love Skilly Baby. Mellow Bucks. You have a lot of like New York artists. Okay. See, you're. Um, uh, Bankroll Bun. It's a bunch. Um, 26, 26 AR. See, Rico. Vori. Oh, my boy. So, okay. Last so, year, hold on. Chip, my boy Chip. What up, Chip? So, Rico, how dare you say that drill is Who said done? that's a drill beat, though? Oh, so you switching it up with the drill artist. I told you I had to, I told you I had to push the album back Ooh, to switch stuff okay. around. I All right. Switch. I can't even be mad at that. But you know what? The So, the B Love song that you teased did not sound... It didn't sound like a drill beat. It sounded like a sample, but it didn't sound like a drill. The Shaw song that you teased, though, it still gave me very much drill vibes. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to keep that. I didn't want to change that because Shaw sound good on it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to leave Shaw on that. Oh, so you have them stepping out their comfort zone. I'm very... How about this? They didn't even know. You know what I did? I just... I took the vocals and I just took the old drill beats out. Mm -hmm. And I produced new beats around the vocals. That's like not drill. That's what I did with the Siggy Black record. It was a hard drill record that me and Melo did. And after that, I just took that off and I... It sounds like some regular shit. Now, are you doing this with them knowing that, or is this? A... I tell them after. Okay. Like I just played um, Busy Banks his record. He didn't hear that version. Mm -hmm. The version he knew was the drill one he did. And what he said? I seen him the other day. He said, "Yo, shit fire." Yeah, he said, "Yo, shit fire." I fuck with it. Okay, Rico, know what he doing? I just want to show them how they sound on other beats. Mm -hmm. Y'all still fire. I just don't gotta do that. Mm -hmm. Y'all could do this and that. People hear them clearly. Like y'all, you can hear each word so much better. Mm -hmm. When you put them on like a calmer beat or whatever without all the noise going around and all the shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of artists also get very complacent in their sound once they <coughs> gain like a large attention off of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to step outside of their comfort zone. Yeah. So that's good. So now you have been trending lately. Um, not you specifically, but a conversation that you had with a fan has been trending. Yo, that kid set me up. He screeched. Do you feel like he set you Yo, up or do you I, feel like he was you know genuinely what it is? asking? Yo. I talk. I, I try to talk to every fan, pop fan, mm -hmm. for one reason. Because pop used to be talking to his fans crazy on the gram, and I used to be like, "Yo, bro, why you be talking to these motherfuckers, bro?" Da, da, da. He's like, "What, bro?" He's showing love. He's like, "What, bro? I love my fans, bro." Yeah. He said, "What? I talk to." He said, "Not a pop impersonation." Really yeah. He said, crazy. "I talk to all of them. I love my fans." So I, it stuck in my head. He said, "Yo, I love my fans. I talk to all of them. Yo, I love my fans." Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Word." So when he passed and like all these fans was on my DM, I just started talking to them for like three years. I just been talking and, and and they keep asking me about new music. But what I said, they kind of took it. Like people say, "Oh, what happened to the record with me? This record I did with Pop, Pop and Meek." Mm -hmm. What you mean? What happened to it? Y'all heard it. Y'all heard the snippet, so you know it's there. Right. So I like. But we're I'm like, speaking about stuff like, that y'all like y'all thinking there's new vocals and Okay, so you're saying stuff that has never even been heard before. Yeah, if y'all heard okay. the snippets, y'all know. Because there's a lot of unreleased. Yeah, and I Pop think got that, a lot of yeah. snippet stuff. I'm not talking about those. I meant like, bruh, ain't no you ain't gonna hear a pop vocal. He talking about yo 2023. No, <laughs> you feel me? Whatever we heard from bro, and whatever y'all hear right now, that little snippets of this, snippet of that. Those are there. Mm -hmm. you get, like the family, I think the family's working on something. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, but as far as like new vocals, like never heard before. Honestly, it's probably there, but I don't got it. Cause before oh, wow. I met Pop, Bro was recording anywhere. Pop used to record in 
in his homeboy's kitchen. Mm. And he was like, any studio. So, especially 09 too, but his boys in 09 too, they probably got some pop stuff. But I don't got it. You know what I'm saying? Everything I had, you heard on Meet the Woo 1, 2, Shoot for the Stars, Faith. Mm. Like, I gave all my pop okay. stuff. Okay. Like, now, that, I'm glad that you cleared that up because I yeah. was definitely wondering about that as well. But I think my biggest takeaway from the screenshot wasn't even about the unreleased. It was more so about what you said about he <coughs> wouldn't approve of 99% of the music that has come out yeah. so far. Why do you think that is? Or what is it about the music that has been released um, after I he just passed? Know, bro, bro was like the short period of time I knew pop. I'm not saying I grew up with Pop. His friends probably know him better than me, of course. But on the business side, and as far as music, he told me everything. Mm -hmm. We was together. When it's music time, like he even told my, my, my attorney, Bob. Bob told me this after. He said, yo, listen. That's when people was like motivating me to keep working and shit. Mm -hmm. Bob was like, yo, he, Pop told him like one time. He said, yo, um, they was talking about me. He said, man, I don't know. I don't know about that managing shit Rico be doing. He said, I don't oh, know about shit. all that shit. Damn. He said, but <laughs> when it comes to like, when he tells me about music, when he tells me, like, yo, do this, do that, put this person on that, that, he said, yo, I listen to everything he said in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, one time, Pop was like, yo, he want to go up. I'm like, yo, bro, you got Dior. We got Meet the Woo out and all that. What you mean you want to go up? You, we, we, you booming. Bob He's like, nah, that. like, that wasn't enough. He said, nah, I want to go up. Like, and I was like, all right, you want to go up, up? I said, all right, bet. You got to stop doing these type of records. I said, yo, bro. I said, I said, check what. I said, you know what runs the world in music? I was like, melodies, right? I said, check out any, all the rich popping dude mm -hmm. from Kanye, Drake, Travis Scott. All them niggas is melodic. Quavo. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, yo, bust some, you know what I mean? And I swear to God, you could even ask Steven. And like two weeks after, Pop told me, yo, don't send him. He's, he's like, don't send him no more drill beats. Mm. I never told nobody like that. He said, yo, you don't want to hear no more drill beats. He said, yo, he said, bro, send me some Travis Scott beats and Quavo type beats. Wow. <laughs> That's so it. interesting because of how synonymous Because he wanted to like, is. how about this? Like, this is why bro was different. Mm -hmm. Pop wanted to move away from kind of like do other records. As soon as he seen everybody was doing it, that's his body. It started getting He's over y'all on that. Now nah, I'm on some different shit. I'm off this. You're broke. Da, 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 da. He's very much a tastemaker. So you know it was so like, like, I could see him wanting to start yeah, something. Yeah, he home. wasn't like, he wasn't like too fond of like, you know what I'm saying? Once he seen like the whole drill shows, he's like, yo, nah, I'm off that. I'll say that was a good look because that deep voice and melodic combo, perfection. Yeah. Like even down to like the little snippets. Like Imperfections is really one of my yeah, favorites and it's like a, a minute long, yeah. but it's something about that melody with the voice. Like it really, it gave us something new that we hadn't really heard before. Yeah. So to what you said, so you said 99%. What would that, or what does that 1% look like yo, that you think Pop that he so, would approve of? Pop was so picky. Right? Mm -hmm. Bro even had a side of, of when, when my boy Bodman you take a picture. He's, he has a side. That like, is my good side. Yo, bro, you, you got to get my good side. Like, when the dude tells you that. That's that star So you know, right <laughs> like, his music, he wasn't playing with it. Mm -hmm. So that's all I meant. I'm not saying, like, it would not be released or nothing. But, like, bro would not just, he would tweak it. He will probably change his verse. He will probably do something. Like, you know what I mean? Like Okay, because there were a couple of things that I felt like. I don't know. I don't know the process of creating a posthumous album. Um, but there were a couple of even like features that I was like, hmm, I wonder if he was still alive, like would these happen? I'm not even gonna, yo, listen, I'm not even gonna touch that because people who know Pop, they know yeah. who he fuck with in the industry. Pop wasn't like no industry friendly dude. Yeah. Bro didn't, he didn't give two Fs about working with nobody. He didn't care about no features. One person he really like, I know for like a fact he loved and besides Quavo, mm -hmm. He loved Quavo. Besides Quavo and Amigos, was uh was Thugger. Mm. He loved Thugger. Free like, Thugger. That's why you see why he bought Thugger Spider. You bought my hit me. See, yo, look, I, the Spider. That's Thugger shit. Mm. Uh, like he fucked with Thugger, hard body, free Thugger. So let me know this. What does that process of a posthumous album look like? Now you said like he really fucked with Thugger. I'm sure there were other people that he would have probably wanted to make Thugger, a song with. Future. Um. Um, 
yo, he wanted to work with Bruno Mars. We had a record that he wanted Bruno Mars on it. But I think they put somebody else on it. That girl, Lupe. Lupe. And Dua Lipa? Yeah. Now, that was going to be my... But that's why I was asking because how involved were the people that actually like knew him and knew what his vision was? How <coughs> involved were they in the making of the posthumous albums? Um, I know that you produced like some yeah, of the songs, but like, did, yeah, what kinda, did that look like? I kind of like... It was a lot going on, so I kind of removed myself. Because mm. like... At first, I gave I gave my input. I sent a listen, right, of of what I feel Pop would have liked, mm -hmm. even with the features, what songs to put on the thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, once I saw like they, they disregarded they, it, they disregarded it. I said, right, "Y'all do y'all thing." And who that was, was for the Faith album? I was like, "Y'all do y'all thing." Yeah, um, I think. And that I see somebody. I think somebody said I was mad because I wasn't involved. Or something. I think it was Joe Budden. Shout out to Joe, man. I fuck with OG, but I can never be mad at that. I'm always involved in the sound with pop. I just didn't like. I saw what was going on. I said, "Oh, word! I y'all do y'all thing." And you know, I think that that says a lot because, and I understand it too from a perspective of if you had still became a part of it and it would have went out and people attached your name to it and said, "Yeah, I'm gonna backlash for that." Like. The kids, even with, um, I forgot what record, Top Shots, they was like, yo, you changed the beat. I said, what? I didn't even know the beat was changed until the album came out. Mm. I swear to God. I even know, I didn't even know the, the tags, the producer tags. I'm a producer. Why would I take producer tags off? Right. So now, but as a manager, as his manager I wasn't pop manager anymore. So at that point, it was Steven Victor. Nah, the, the family had control of stuff. Ah. A lot of people know that, like, when bro pass, people be thinking, like, I'm not in, like, I got no says. The family controls that. Like, even mm -hmm. if you want to clear a record, don't hit me. I could, you could hit me. I'm going to hit up Obasi, bro, 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 or the moms. Mm -hmm. I don't got no, or Steven, though. I think the family, if Steven got a say, it's probably because his pop was on his label. Mm -hmm. and he probably could, like, got a say so and shit. But yeah, because I feel like there has to be some music exec that's facilitating, like, all yeah, of this. Yeah, but pop's family controls his whole shit. So. Right. Nothing could go down without mom, Mama Smoke saying they could right. go down. So. so, I mean, I know that she she appeared on um, on Faith. So, do you think that, like, the family is happy with what has came out? <coughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because that, never, like, I, I feel like... Them, I okay, know. and that's fair, because I wanted to ask you how you felt. Obviously, I know now how Faith, you felt, I like but Faith. I know from our this oh, or that. I like that. I mean, I think that it was it was a very popular opinion that right. that was not the pop that we had grown to know and love. Yeah, they, they, I don't know what I don't know what happened with that one. Yeah, but I, um, I was involved in that one. All I did was that send my beat files for the records that I did uh -huh. for Bro, and that was it. So now going back, just bridging this with what you said before about there being no unreleased unheard lyrics that you have made personally I no no no, no. I I, so that you have made how do you feel about ai how do you feel about people who are making new lyrics using the sound of late rappers to make new songs that's trash did you hear um the song that timbaland sampled with him and biggie and biggie shouted out pop in his that's crazy what else y'all gonna do y'all gonna go make one y'all gonna bring them back Y'all gonna have them walking in the streets? Yeah, like, I mean, on, give it up, man. It's that very AI scary. stuff. I ain't with it. That's whack. So you think killing, that's like killing the shit, man? Right. That Respect not, them where they are. Y'all not making the people not here special no more. Y'all fucking duplicating their voice, doing weird shit. I mean, and the thing for me is, it's not even like a similar sound. At least from what I heard with Timbaland snippet. I mean, because I don't think ever in a million years Biggie would use the words "it's not given." I really don't think that he would say that. You know what it is? Um, Some people like people need to learn to, to like. Sometimes you gotta learn to just like not not move on, but just chill <laughs> and respect what has yeah, been made. Like, just chill, bro. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like Pop is one of those artists that, and Biggie too, that makes timeless music. So yeah, you can't. it's. You, gotta leave you don't need to duplicate yeah. that and do too much. Okay, so what do you think is the difference um, between people who are, like, showing love to people who have passed away and then people who are, like, clout chasing, dick riding? There's a lot of clout chasing, man. I don't post... Yo, I don't even post about pop a lot. Yeah, you it's don't. Like, it's not because I don't be thinking about, bro. 
I got a lot of pop pictures and videos and moments, but I just like I don't want to fall in that clout shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want people like because I'm gonna get tight mm-hmm. if somebody think I'm posting bro for clout. Mm-hmm. So I rather don't do shit. You feel me? Before like I get out of character and motherfuckers, oh you posting pop for clout? Nah. I leave. I even got pop name still on my bio. Cause that's the first artist I ever managed in my life. Mm-hmm. That's probably the last one. And have you seen like I mean, cause I've seen it just from a listener, from a consumer standpoint, but from a producer and exec standpoint, has there been? How do you feel like there have been a lot of people that have been attaching themselves to his legacy for clout? Yeah, at the early, early, the early stage when he passed, yeah, mm-hmm. there was a lot of clout, man. I, I used to see a lot of people post him. That I done seen Pop bark that and say he only like you know he said shit too and mm-hmm. I see them posting like bro I'm like what bro's about to beat you up <laughs> like a couple months ago <laughs> like come on stop it bro ain't that's it you. it's because they know that yeah, he I'm can't like, like he's not here to say Pop, anything yes, otherwise man Pop really fuck with who he fuck with is his boys the, the hood mm-hmm. his block on our too like his dread woo the uh, trav like you know what I mean like his his mm-hmm. guys like mm-hmm. anything else was like extra shit you know? rest in peace pop yeah. um he so fuck with jay guapo hard too i gotta shout jay guapo oh yeah shout out to jay guapo yeah. pop sure. love guapo boy yeah what? they definitely they had a track together that was yeah pop love guapo fire. he loved guapo chef and t and when he met tj tj was his new best friend and that was it mm-hmm. yeah yeah long live pop so you had just said um you are you're very laid back you don't post a lot not only about pop but you don't post a lot about yourself either and i think it's interesting because now a lot of people say that like instagram is the new business card everybody's very like on it about like posting the stuff that they're doing in real time and me personally i don't really post that much i know that i could um but you also don't post any much but i think it's because your work could speak for itself uh no i just don't like posting so do you feel like that do you think that that reigns to be true though? I've like try, I've been trying is? to post because the bro and like the label be trying like, mm-hmm. and I got a tape coming out, so I gotta like do something. Do some kind of promo, but yeah. If I ain't had that, yeah, because you don't even really talk about like your your label. Let's talk about your label since you don't post Star about Life? it. Yeah, so let's talk about it. Star Life. How did that come about? What's that all about? I had that name forever. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't remember how I came up with that. Okay. Yeah, I don't even. So it's a label. You have anybody signed to you right now? Um. Yes and no. What does that mean? Yes and no. <laughs> Elaborate. It's a, it's a How? Yes. What is it? Yes, and like you have things in the works. Yeah, it's is like it a, like not uh, confirmed yet? It's a. Uh, okay, so ideally speaking, <laughs> if you could sign five people, who would you sign? Five people where? To your label. Uh, yo, honestly, I tried to sign like 15 people the first time I got my label. <laughs> okay. They turned me down. I, I mean, I that's I a bit advantageous. Whole, I sent a list. Because Steven's like, yo, send a list of people you want to sign. I, I put everybody in my hood. I had everybody in the floors on there, man, from fucking Quelly Woo, <laughs> Tay Floors, everybody. Mm-hmm. And the label's like, nah, you can't sign 15, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how does shit Not work? as a new label. I'm like, damn, I can't, send, I can't bring the hood? What the fuck is this? Love the thought, though. Yeah. Great idea. Um, So five. Just give me five people that you would like to sign. Whether they were on your original list or just wants, somebody recent. Right now, I'm chilling. Rico, don't do that. What? I'm not saying, like, who are you actively signing right now? Who would be nice to be on your label? Like, if you had, like, the perfect rollout. Now, even if you want to include people that are signed, I'll, I'll give you a pass and let you do that, too. But what would, like, the perfect rollout, your starting five, for your label look like? Ooh, starting five? Mm-hmm. All right. You got to be, like, the, the new kids, new generation kids? Huh? No, it doesn't. I mean, but don't don't OD what? like. Shit, listen, I, I, I no, 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 no. That's what future. I was about, and that's why. And I got that's yay. why. No, 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 I no, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> Let me dial this back. Oh, hold right. on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, no, because that's why I looked at you and I did not. And I got say, hold. What? Hold on. Respectfully, I'm sitting across from you. I did not give you a yes. Oh. I looked at you and I said, "Don't OD," because I knew you were gonna go too mainstream. When I say you can include people that are... And I won't post Malone. 
See, and you're still doing it. All right, now, mean. just for that, just because you did that. Mean squad. All upcoming. Who's your upcoming artist? What upcoming artist would be in your starting five? Who's who's upcoming? Somebody um talking about like one of the kids right now, like shy them? Yeah, I mean you yeah. It doesn't only have to be New York either. Um oh shit. It could it could be anywhere. I mean make sure you show some love to New York. But. Um I would assign I would assign um female wise, I would assign Shorty. Who? From was she from Memphis? That way uh I would assign her. Okay. She she cool. I fucks with her. Um, I, I think I probably signed Dougie. Dougie? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Spice. Mm-hmm. I probably school. Take care of the street. I probably school my boy Dread. My boy Dread Wu. I got like I got like favorite artists. That's like you know, you know um. What's bro name um. Hmm. Mm -mm. Yeah, I forgot her name, but um, who else is good? Yo, honestly, I was signing all these kids and just put them on, on some Professor X shit, <laughs> right? Put, these, put them in the building and like, you know what I mean? Uh huh. I'll build them, motherfuckers, man. It really gives Scott. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, cause they all like nobody's whack. Mm hmm. It's just, they all missing that. I wanted to hear what words you said. I wanted to hear who you said because I wanted to see if you was going to throw an R&B artist in there since R&B is your favorite. What R&B's firing now? Um, upcoming, Tone Sith. He's who? Tone Sith. He's, he's from New York. Um, the artist. They're very upcoming, though. Okay, if we want to get in like the mainstream category. Well, I probably was talking about some boogie, man. Okay, that's a Fuck good one. Bugs. That's a good one. Fuck with bug. I would have signed TJ too. I would have signed everybody. I told you I would sign all these kids, have them in a freaking uh, uh, school of whatever. Like I'm, and I'm Professor X. You feel me? I don't know. Maybe yeah. you could do like a little rollout, uh, like and a I'm like Professor a summer. X and, I, and I and I'm. That sounds. That I'm sounds. Give good. all of them their special powers, and you know, let them know who they are. Like yo, you this, you know, like you gonna this your crowd, you this, you that. Like mm -hmm. they, they don't got that. I'm trying to tell you. I'll sign everybody, man. Okay. A lot of things also that I hear, I know we got to wrap up, but a lot of things that I hear too are that like, it's not that the people aren't there to like give that instruction. Oh, it's that boy, they're Curly, not really shout, receptive. You know Curly, you fuck with Curly? Curly of course I do. That's my boy. Shout out to Curly. Okay. So you, yeah, you like would Curly. sign Curly? Yeah, that's my boy. Okay. Right, it's Curly shout out to Curly. Curly. All right. But I, um, like a lot of people say that it's that like these artists are very headstrong. So oh, it's not that they're. Chef, <laughs> okay. Things just popping up in my they head. Coming. All right. All right. I'll all right. sign my boy Chef for sure. Okay. Chef would be like, chef, chef, I'll put chef on that squad for sure. For sure. For sure. Okay. Him and my, Shout him out and, chef. Him and Sleep. Him and Sleep. Backcourt. Wildin'. Shout out to Chef. Him and Sleep. Wildin'. Okay. So okay. now tell me, Rico. I'll probably grab my son Roddy. <laughs> tell Roddy, boy, let's go, my boy. Now, you know? you, I see why you had 15 people in that I lineup. You, I'll be I see. see. Everybody. I just can't. Okay. Um. So in, in your opinion, what are like some of the pros? Definitely G Herbal, though. My All right, I'm gonna just wait. Right, <laughs> I'm gonna do what the teacher right, used ahead, to do. Ahead, I'll ahead. wait. You she done? Just popping up, yeah. I mean, I'm, if you got more, no, I'm done. All she right. So, what do you think is the difference between like producing now versus producing when you first started? Is it better to be a producer what? now, or Hell yeah? Why? Matter of fact, I don't know. You know why? Because the shit changed. It's kind of easier to make beats now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Back when I was starting, that shit was like a fucking, that shit was like a mission. Because the technology was like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To go to the studio, you had to have like, you had to bring your keyboard, your freaking MP, and you had to like, to get something and to dump it in Pro Tools was a fucking hassle. But now you just do that shit in ten, like five minutes. Everything's mm -hmm. on a laptop. It's very accessible, very yeah, everything's easy. Everything's on a laptop and everything. You know what I'm saying? But I think that it's like a different feel. Mm. It's like hardware. Right now, there's a lot of software. Back in the days, it's hardware. But like with hardware, you can feel it. It's a different feel when you're making a beat. Like sometimes when I use my MP, like my drums, like my drums be different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, then 
on the software, sometimes it'd be a little like robotic, it's like it's stiff. But when you use it, when you actually like, it's a different, it gives you that human type. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It doesn't seem as like manufactured. Yeah. Like, you know, the software, like you just, everything is just boop, boop, boop. It's like a robotic shit. Mm -hmm. But with the, with the hardware, you could just play with it. You could do whatever you want. You could explore shit. It's mm -hmm. different. Okay, and I know that you, like I said before, you manage Axel and um, 808, who Hello. I think are both very, Those they're are very, boys, very, man. very shout big. Out to Mello, man. Yes, Axel. 808 shout out to Mello and Mello Axel. Too, Yamaka. Everybody over there. Dumb the UK game. producers. Ghosty, gotcha. Yo, all the goats out there in the UK, man. Mm -hmm. I learned, yo, I don't even know I make drill beats before them. Like UK drill. I learned from them. I learned from Mello. Um, Axel and like tapping in with Ghosty and all these guys, I just pick up shit. Yamaka. And it's so interesting how the worlds collide because, like yeah. I said, they're very instrumental, especially mm -hmm. like in the drill, the upcoming drill wave. Yeah. You're from Even Brooklyn. on my project, I, colla I, I collab with them, mm -hmm. with, with most of the UK dudes, so it could feel real. I'm not top UK drill producer. So, like, why the fuck I'm gonna make a whole fucking tape with drill? I'm not that nigga. I mean, teamwork make the dream. Yeah, I'm so I had to tap in with the guys that are really. The founders that really does that, mm -hmm. so it can feel like authentic. So when you hear Rico going crazy, you'll hear a Ghosty in the back. You'll hear Eight Away Mellow or whatever. So you know, oh yeah, this is some authentic shit. Ghosty's one of the top dogs mm -hmm. over there and shit. So okay. You know what I'm so now, do you? What's bro name? I gotta shout him out, man. X10, a real shout out to X10. I love that he knew exactly who you were talking yeah, he about. Yeah, you know, because he, he said it. That's a real one. Yeah, okay. Boy, shout out to do you ever hear songs that you wish you produced? Mm -hmm. I get tight. Nope. No. She gonna get me tight. <laughs> like you never hear something like I could have mixed that better. I could have nah. did something different with this. Nah, cause them shit songs I wish I produced they fucking big hits. So. Okay. I get tight like damn. I wish I. Did you that. wish you would have won. Yeah. Okay. So Rico, what can we expect for you? Obviously, this album. When can we expect the project? I ain't gonna front. This, this project's moving like detox right now. Mm. I'm on my Dr. Dre shit. Nah, I'm lying. We, I'm trying to drop in July. Yeah, I'm like, I don't like nah, the sound I'm, I'm of that. Nah, I'm coming like July. I'm just waiting for the label to give me like the date. Okay. But you think we got told some? They me July. It was like July, sometime in July. You think we got some summer bops in there? What? Oh, all right. I'm going to hold you to that because we was just having this conversation with Lauren K. I I'm mean. I'm spice up the summer. I'm going to spice it up. All right. We still looking for that summer bop. Oh, so no, I'm going to hold you to I that. Got, trust me. It's like a couple of those on the tape. All right, Rico. So what else? So we got the project. Anything else that we could be looking forward to? Um, I got like a little, my little brand, my Starlight brand. I'm, I turn into like a, a clothing type. Yeah, product. and we need to restock that because yeah. there's nothing yeah, right now. I, so let's I, work I, I on told, that. Yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta get back on it. I've be, been working on the tape. Let's. <laughs> well, when y'all resell, spin a block, come back yeah, here because we would love some I got merch. You. I'm working on that, and like I'm trying to like. Um, get an artist going. I got a couple of artists I want to sign. I just don't want to talk about it yet. Little situations blocking certain stuff to happen. So, okay. After I clear that out, sign my artist. Run New York real quick again, and shit. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like work on this like TV show. Mm. What kind of TV show? Kind of like reality on my neighborhood, scripted on the woods. Oh. Whatever. Yeah. It's gonna be scripted reality. Mm -hmm. What kind? Mm hmm. What's the mm hmm? Because mm -hmm. it wasn't a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm working on that. Uh uh. <laughs> All right. So We're going to keep it under wraps for mm -hmm. now, I guess. Cool. Well, if you need some development, I'm a development coordinator. So, I'm going to be in touch with you about that. Yeah. All right. And what else? Anything else that you want to touch on before, before we wrap up? Nah, shout out to New York, man. I wish, I wish all the kids, man, good luck in this shit, man. I, I wish all of them could. could I want all of them to elevate, man. Mm -hmm. I want all of them to get out, get out the box, because everybody's in the box just bumping heads right now. I want, I want each of them to find their way, this their own little shit, and just go up, man. We gonna put that out there for them yeah. and manifest that. Start they the, they the future, man. They gotta like get it going, baby. I agree. All right. Well, Rico, shout yourself out for the people that don't know. Where can they find you? Where can you find me? I, you I said, shout me. yourself out. You start though. No. <laughs> you can't find me, but 
my gram, you know my gram. That's it. That's the only place you gonna find me. You ain't Bro, gonna find low me key. In the streets. Yeah, cause I definitely checked your Twitter. You really don't be active on there. Last you don't be I active on like, TikTok. No socials. I don't even know how to use TikTok. We gonna have to put you on game, bro. <laughs> Cause especially as we get closer to you, yeah. you gotta put your shit out there. <laughs> we we gonna get you right. I'm gonna try. Well, thank you so much for stopping nah, by. It's been so man. good to have sure. you. Thank you for giving yeah. us your time. Look. And we will regroup and see. Bow. See y'all.